Hi everyone, this is Heather Smith with Storyable Photography, and today I'm going to show you how to achieve this edit. It's just a fun little Christmas edit I did on my kids, because I think we can all agree that toilet paper, Clorox wipes, and masks were the biggest trends of 2020. So, um, yeah, fun stuff. Anyway, so this is where we're going to finish, and this is where we are going to begin. So, final product and right now. The first thing I want to do is come into my action panel and I want to find the smoothing and sharpening action right here. Open that up, hit step one, and click the play button. Now this you can play around with the opacity as much as you want as you have seen me do in other tutorials and for here I don't want it on the full opacity so I'm going to crank it to about 24 percent and then I'm going to hit the step two and hit play and I'm going to do the same for that and that a little bit more and that looks good to me and then I'm gonna go to the layer and flatten image and now I want to click on the background layer and make a copy command J and then I want to go into the filters and go into the camera raw filter right there and then I want to use the rose gold presets on this image. So I'm going to go into the preset um, icon and I'm going to go with rose gold number two for the image. And then I am going to come back onto the main page and adjust my exposure. And if you want, you guys can adjust anything, um, absolutely anything you want to with this preset. I recommend playing the preset and then adjusting exposure, like the highlights, whites, blacks, shadows, and your temperature to your liking. I don't care what anybody says unless they are mind readers and can completely cover a whole slew of different photography and photographer style. There are not any one-click presets. So if you see that, run or you're just gonna get really lucky because they must be geniuses. It's just not possible. Um, okay, so anyway, that's what I wanna do for that image, and I'm gonna hit the okay. And that is the before and the after. And then I wanna make another copy of that, so I'm gonna go Command J, and I'm gonna go back into the camera raw. And for here, as you can see, they still have like kind of a green yellow tint to their hats and I just want that pure white. So I am gonna go into the saturation and crank the yellows down. And then I wanna just increase the luminance a little bit on that. And that looks good to me. So I'll hit play there. And before and after, such an easy little tweak, but it makes a huge difference. So now, um, oh, one more thing with the camera. I could have done that in there this past time, but we'll just go back into it on the same layer. And I wanna kinda deepen their outfits, the reds. Uh, so I'll go back into the hue and saturation um, slider here, and I'm gonna just decrease the luminance on the red. And then I'm gonna go into the hue, and I'm going to decrease that more so to make it even deeper and that looks pretty good to me so that's the before and the after the camera raw is so powerful guys and if you're not a fan of lightroom i highly recommend utilizing that filter process it makes life really really easy moving on the next thing i want to do is brighten up their skin a little bit and their eyes so i'm going to go into the retouch and i'm going to go to the Brighten skin and eyes, hit play, open it up. Click on the brighten eyes first. Make sure you have a soft white brush at 100% opacity, and you can always dial it back if it comes on too strong. But it's nice to kind of see where you're painting. I'm zooming it in even more. There we go, and over here. And then the last set. And that looks good. So before and after, brighten those up. And again, if it comes on too strong, just play around with the opacity right here. Now I'm gonna brighten up the skin. Start with my little guy in the middle here, 100% opacity. And you can also run this over the eyes. It makes it pop even more. 
it may be a little bit here. I'm going to have to mask some of that off or it's going to be blown out. So I'm going to crank that down about 53%, switch it to a black brush, and just quickly go over that just a teeny bit. Back onto the white brush. Uh, their skin was a little bit more bright than my son, as you can tell from the get-go. So I'm going to keep that at about 53% soft white brush and just run it over their skin really quick. Okay, and that does it for the retouch. There's the before and after. And now I want to move on to the ultimate dodge and burn. Let me zoom out so you can see everything we're working on here. Oh, also with the rose gold, if you guys aren't a Lightroom or ACR fan, I also have it in an action form, and it does very similar things, and you can work with layers. So moving on to the ultimate dodge and burn, I'm going to hit play. Okay, open this up, and I'm going to first work with some of the clothing. I'm going to go to the dodge and burn combo. combo. It dodges and it burns all at the same time. And I'm going to run this over their hats. You can always turn it up a little bit or turn it down, whatever you prefer. Come on over here. And it kind of just breaks, um, brightens up the murkiness that was left on the hat from desaturating those colors completely. A little bit here. My son's little outfit. Can you guys believe I got that on the clearance rack at Macy's for $4 postseason? Like, you just cannot beat it. <laughs> it's really, really funny on him, and he just thinks he is the man wearing this Christmas blazer. Anyway, not too much skin is showing. Um, and we already brightened it up with the retouch, but you could go in there and dodge and burn a little bit more if you'd like. But for this, I'm going to just keep it as is. And for the environment, I want to darken this tree up a little and make the whites pop. So I'm going to paint on the dodge and burn combo, and it's going to come on really strong at first, and then we'll dial it back. But I like to have my actions really strong so I can see where I'm painting, and then adjust accordingly after. So if you open this up and you're like, oh, wow, super strong, like, you'll thank me, guys, because you can see what you're doing, um, and it helps prevent halos and stuff, especially in finer details. So that looks good to me. And then I'm going to just do a little bit of the extra dodge up here on that Clorox uh, tree topper there. Isn't that so fun? And then burn a little bit where the writing is. Even though it's not completely in focus, um, I want it to kind of pop out. So that is the before and after with the dodge and burn. And what's standing out to me right now is it doesn't always bother me, but I feel like my eye is just kind of drawn to this branch here. So I'm going to click on um, a background layer and I'm going to just take the patch tool and I'm going to circle this patch to um, the patch tool. I'm going to circle that branch and just kind of pull down an area that looks good to me. Do that a couple times to make it blend. And there we go. Now goodbye to that very, very prominent branch. So I think the, I just have two more things I want to do, guys. I'm going to open up the Storyville overlay number three, select it, copy it, and then if I can get back on here, what's going on? Okay, there we go. Click on the top, hit Command V, Command T will free transform it, set this to screen mode. And I've been getting a lot of messages lately, guys, on how to install the overlays into Photoshop or into the presets in Lightroom. This is not an action and it is not a preset. They are overlays, so you open them up like you would any image. They're JPEGs. And then you can either drag and drop it on top or copy and paste it, as I showed, and then move it around to your liking, resize it. Um, whatever you'd like, but you cannot install them into your actions or your preset panel. Okay, so there we go. And I actually want it uh, more prominent. So I'm going to copy this layer. So Command J and it makes the snow just come on stronger. I'm going to group these together. So select them both and hit this little group icon and then the mask. And I'm going to take a soft black brush 
at 100% opacity and just make sure it's not like covering up their eyes or anything. I do like to keep it on their clothing and a little bit on their arms and stuff, but if it, you have like a snowflake right in the middle of their eye and stuff, um, you're just gonna wanna get rid of that because that's not fun and not pleasant to look at. And then the last thing I wanna do is come over here and make a new layer. Make sure my brush is on um, the white and I want to select the scattered star brush. You can find that in the Holiday Magic Pack. And then I just want to run it over the tree topper to make it kind of glisten because most of tree toppers that I know are lit up. Uh, you could also add like a light overlay if you wanted to really make it glow. You could use the single star brushes um, to light up some of the tree. But in this case, because we already have so much brightness going on, especially with the snow layers, I'm going to not add any lights to the tree. And you can find that in the Holiday Magic Pack, these brushes. They're a lot of fun. I'm going to take, um, select a soft black brush again and just kind of run it over that writing right there. And that does it, guys. We are done. Pretty easy. Uh, this is where we began. Do you remember that? Look at those greens and stuff. And now we kind of turned it into like a blushy pink winter snowland. I hope you guys enjoyed. You can find everything I used here at www.storybuildphotography.com. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.